trust the theorem. The shuttle is ready to take you to the trial. Red Barrels returns to Outlast doing what it does best in making an immersive horror experience that captivates audiences in their latest game, The Outlast Trials. Outlast is known for its intense atmosphere, really compelling stories, and utilization of gore to draw players into its creepy and beautifully disgusting world. Ever since Outlast 2, I wasn't sure how Red Barrels was going to tackle another installment to the franchise, especially a multiplayer installment. Outlast has a unique way of telling a story in that there's a heavy utilization of notes and psychology to keep the player on their toes, eagerly anticipating the game's next move. Creeping around the corner of each hallway, either playing by myself or with friends, I was waiting for the game's cheesy gotcha moment, but there was none. I've become so desensitized to horror games over the years, so to see that Outlast is returning to its roots is a joy. Delicately placing fear where it knows the player best, with red barrels utilizing the nostalgia they know they created, it's like coming home. What's going on, you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be diving into my review of The Outlast Trials. Palm sweating, thoughts racing, heart pounding, my experience with the Outlast Trials was like going back in time when I played the first Outlast game. Since this was mainly a multiplayer experience, I wasn't sure if I would like it since I play games on my own for the most part. I'm not a big fan of multiplayer unless it's in Dark Souls or Destiny 2, and even then I prefer playing solo. The Outlast Trials co-op experience was fun, challenging, and didn't take away from the story and immersion of the game. The experience as a whole created the same immersion I felt playing Outlast for the first time, with minimal resources, intense jump scares, and a narrative that tells me Red Barrels is going back to what they do best, psychological immersion. Now, as a forewarning, this game is intensely graphic and gruesome and has more gore in the first few cutscenes than the first Outlast game and DLC Whistleblower combined. So please go into this game knowing that you had planned to play it. The gore in Outlast games is like the gore in Saw movies, crucial to the story and put there for a reason. The gore has a place which creates meaning for the player. When you're searching for a key in someone's gut or you find someone tied up, it's connected to a note or an objective. Gore is never in these games to make something disgusting just to be disgusting. The narrative of the Outlast series is as follows. You don't have weapons, you have your smarts, you have healing items, and you have places to hide. Much like Outlast 1, Whistleblower, and Outlast 2, everything the player does is like making a move in a chess game. The moves need to be well thought out and timed correctly. And if you're like me, just wait in the locker until you don't hear a peep and know it's safe to adventure out into the cannibalistic world. The story of the Outlast Trials is an interesting one because unlike a lot of multiplayer titles, the story is the primary focus, not the secondary. In playing through this game for the time that I did, more of an emphasis was placed on the player's experience with the story, partially relying on getting through with friends rather than by yourself. Much like in the first Outlast game, survival is a puzzle, and getting through that puzzle takes understanding of the area around you. Surviving and helping your teammates survive as well are all wrapped up in the bigger picture, which is escaping. Even in the prologue, we need to destroy ourselves to become someone new by getting rid of personal documents so we could be born again, if you will. Red Barrels is going back to its roots in this title, and the exploration is reminiscent of the very first Outlast game. There's a weird cop stalking you, which reminds me of the Whistleblower DLC where Eddie Gluskin would try to woo me to be his blushing bride. Fun times. The other characters stalking me throughout this game had this adrenaline-inducing effect, and it was some of the most fun I had in co-op. When hiding in lockers, you can hear the creatures muttering to themselves in discouragement, and it was rather fun to witness. Now, The Outlast Trials has a unique way of going about the upgrading system, as well as the use of motifs in the game that code how the story and overall experience are brought to the player. There are sections where you can upgrade your rig and prescriptions, but have to be at a certain level of therapy to use. I thought, oh, cool, there are therapy sessions to coincide with the character and the story. No, the trials that you are going through are the therapy sessions. Think about that for a second. While there are still no weapons, there's ways to place traps and get better meds and to make the process just a little bit easier. Each time you finish, um, well, a, a therapy session, <laughs> you're brought right back to your treatment facility where you can decorate your cell, change clothes, and even play chess with your co-op partner. There's a lot to do in this game besides the main trials, which is really neat. 
Now let's dive into a bit of the psychology. This was probably my main gripe that I had with the game during my gameplay time. Either playing solo or with a team, it is possible to contract psychosis in the game from either traps or the pusher enemy that sprays hallucinogenic gas, which causes said psychosis. Nitrous oxide abuse, for example, can cause psychotic symptoms as well as drug-induced psychosis amongst other mental illnesses, but the symptoms vary from person to person and don't take place in a matter of seconds. While I understand that this is all done for dramatic effect to create tension and instability in the surroundings, it adds to the stigma surrounding psychosis, which is by far one of the most misrepresented symptoms in psychiatric illnesses. I really love the Outlast games. They are inspired by some of the greatest horror games like Resident Evil. The co-op truly shocked me with how good it was and how it linked so well with the story. You have to work with your partner to make it out alive, and that true cooperation is what I found surprising in the best way. Even the notes that were in the game told a convincing story preceding the first Outlast. Staying alive in a horror game isn't easy, but with a few friends, smarts, and sneaking around a few dead bodies, anything is possible. The Outlast Trials is one of the best Xbox games for fans of horror and co-op. Red Barrels took the urgency and feeling from the first Outlast game and put it into a co-op experience, bringing back not only the nostalgia that I had, but hope that this could be the horror revival we've all so desperately been waiting for. But you guys, that was it for my review for the Outlast Trials. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below and if you guys have started playing the Outlast Trials yourselves yet. But if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below. I make videos every weekday here on YouTube. When you find your worth in the waking world, your hunter, stay casually nerdy, and I will see you all in the next video. Umbasa.